pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call to order roll call, starting on my right. Councilperson Josh Hearn. Councilperson Brent Beyer. Mayor Jimmy John King. Councilperson Craig Anderson. <laughs> Councilperson Jeremiah Olgin. We're looking for approval of tonight's agenda. Any addition from staff? What you see uh, should be what you get. That's it for tonight. Anything up here? Move to approve. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Approval of council meeting minutes. Uh, regular meeting of April 14th, 2020. I'll make motion approved. There's motion. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have a second? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Now we're looking for a motion on the minutes of the special meeting where of April 14th, 2020. We have a motion to approve. We have a second. Second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That will carry. Then, lastly, the minutes of special meeting of April 14th, 2020, of the tax abatement. I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That will carry. That will take us on the finance and budget. You have accounts payable with the additional listings there. <clears throat> I got a question, just for my own information. I see this one, and we've had it before from the fire department for uh, Haley's comfort system for electrical work and stuff. They put in, a, uh, it was like an electrical heater yeah. that was put in. Okay. So, but I guess my question is, this is where I was questioning why we got to go up. Do we got to go for bids at a certain number, or do we at least look for local contractors first before we go outside the area for stuff like this, electrical and stuff like that? Or, I mean, just for my own curiosity, this time, you know, especially now in this day and age, everybody's beating their heads against the wall trying to make money. Yeah, I'll find out what they, if they, if they did or whatever. Because is it for one of the rooms? I'm not sure. Just wondering, you know, we can keep as much local right now as we can would help everybody else. Fair question. All right, that's the only questions I got. Anybody else got any questions? If not, we'll look for a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. We have a second. Second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. That takes us to the 2020 budget first quarter review. Carla? All right, so if you guys want to go ahead and open that up, there's a lot of different graphs in here just to kind of look at things different ways, dependent on how you want to see it. And since this is kind of our first time through it, you can let me know what you think too. Um, so we're going to look at it. the first slide here with the revenue of the first quarter. This is based on our total budgets for 2020. Um, obviously, there's a lot of the budget that has not come in for the revenue based on the taxes and such that are coming in. So right now we're at 7.2% of our total revenue budget. And looking at the next slide of it is just kind of in a pie graph, just give you another view of it. Then on the third slide, it has the revenue details, which then in the far column, I did a quarterly split, just didn't, didn't evenly split across all four quarters, which we obviously know that it's not gonna be even um, for the quarters, but it gives you kind of an idea of what we're doing. And right now we do know that the tax payments that we normally get to fund the budget are going to be delayed um, since they're being delayed coming into the county. Um, then, like I said, there's just been, there's another, um, with the revenue budgets, just looking at breaking out for the library, the economic development, our department, civic center, um, the enterprise funds, just to kind of see where we're at and what's going on. And then 
there, then this is the one where the revenue is broken out for each of those individual items as well on a per quarter basis. Then if we move on to expense, we can see that we are at 13.89% of our annual budget. Right now, things on the budget, nothing is out of the ordinary or seems um, out of whack for this portion of the quarter. Um, like I said, then just another pie graph of another way to look at where we're at for each of the expenses and the categories. And then again, a breakout of specifics um, within the details of the analysis and the quarterly split evenly amongst each quarter. Now one thing that I will note is there is a negative amount in the fire and emergency services. That is based on that state farm grant that we got for those um, speed signs. And we had the money come in, but we've not expensed anything out yet on it. So that's why you're seeing that. And then the 1Q expense summary that just is showing broke out with the budget evenly for the first quarter. And then there's just another slide with additional details and lots of things for you to see and just kind of look and compare depending on how you'd like to see it. Um, then I did add in what we had for the cash reserves at the end of 2019, just so you can kind of see where everything was at there and where the city is sitting um, for all of those things. So those are the funds that get moved over from year to year and accumulate at, until we need to use them. There, there's a couple slides of that as well. There, I know there's a lot of information in there and a lot to kind of take in and different ways to look at it, but I didn't know if anybody has any questions or concerns on what they're seeing. Any questions for Carla? Anything you've noticed in there that you like an answer to or you like the way she's presented it? Or? I just had a question on the uh, taxes coming in. Um, if there's, is it going to be a delayed payment for all of it, or are you going to get increments of like the people that pay on time and the people that delay it? The county has not specified that yet, and I don't know how much you know if they will do part of it on time. But at this point, they've said it's going to be delayed. Okay. But as you all know, if you have it in our in your like for your mortgage. Already yep. built into that, then it has to be on time. So I don't know if they haven't. Okay. And then the governor on Friday said he and the legislature so far are committed to all the LGA that we've been promised. So, um, and that's supposed to be timely, um, but I don't think those payments come in until July anyway. So, okay. Or the first one. Any, any other questions for Carla or anything you'd like to see presented differently or? Cool. Right. Anything else, Carla, for us? Not right now. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. That'll take us to motions of general business. First item on their motions of general business tonight is the 2020-2021 CIP project. The city advertised for bids for the CIP project. Uh, this time we use advertised bids using the best value. Bids were received from A1 Excavating in Bloomington, Wisconsin, and Elkhorn Construction, Rochester, Minnesota. Public Works Committee, along with City Engineer O'Mearlty, City Minister Schimmel, and Public Works Director Haley evaluated the bids. They used six categories to determine the best value experience, past performance, experience in construction projects, experience, significant personal history, resumes, project approach, overall project schedule, project bid amounts. The first five bullet points were evaluated, the second and first and individually by each of the five members, and then tallied and averaged together. The sixth bullet point, bid amount cost, was then divided by the final average technical score, which provided the adjusted bid score. The adjusted bid score's best value of the bidders were then compared for award, and bid recommendation was for Elcor Construction. Jenna, do you, got a, do you want to add something before I... Uh, Ask for uh, council action. I I can go over a little more um, if anyone's interested in how we looked at everything and how things were um, weighted in for. Um, otherwise, if there aren't any questions, you can you can go ahead and vote. Okay. So okay. So Ask about the estimate versus bid. 
the ball to what? Yeah, that's what about the estimate, estimate versus bid, because that's good news. It oh, came in under estimate, right? That's right. It came in quite a lot under estimate, didn't you? Or for the actual bid price, Jenna? Yes. Yeah. Good. Um, so we still came in just a little over half a million under under the bid, huh? Let's blow it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's blow it. Let's get the other parking lot done. <laughs> yeah. type of bids more and more all the time now, Jenna? There's some cities that use this all the time on any projects that are, you know, above like half a million or even above a quarter of a million. Um, those, but um, I've talked to a couple of those cities. I don't see it all across the state. Okay. But um, there definitely are some that like the ability to apply um, this other information um, and make them more educated, I guess, on who they're hiring. Right. Right. Does anybody at the table have any other questions for Jenna? When's the uh, estimated start date, Jenna? virtual version of a neighborhood open house similar to what we've had in the past so. all right any other questions for Jenna thanks for all the information uh, so council has action requested on this would be to approve resolution 2020 dash a resolution receiving bids and awarding contract to Elcor construction for the 2020 2021 CIP project 
We have a motion. I'll make that motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? second. We have a second from Craig. Any questions or other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That will carry. That takes us on to our next one, which is Flats 55 development, a public utility project. The city advertised for bids for the Flats 55 public utility project, which includes water main, sanitary sewer, and sanitary manholes. The city received five bids. City Engineer Obernolte had tabulated the bids and is recommending that Elcor Construction be awarded the contract with a low bid of $63,356. Jenna, anything you want to add to this? How much under did this one come in? 20. Uh, Sherry, sure, yeah. so, uh, our estimate was at $83,000. Contract to Elkhart Construction for the 2020 Flats 55 utility project. Do we have a motion? I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Thank you for all that, Jenna. Next item under Public Work Street Maintenance. The city has advertised and solicited bids for the 2020 chip, seal, and crack filling projects. Attached is a listing of streets to be completed, which is on another page. And the following bids will receive Chip Seal, Pearson Brothers Incorporated, Buck 20 Square Yard, that's 59924 Far Is that Farmer? Farmer. Farmer. Farmer Asphalt, 265 Square Yard, $132,333. Crack Fill is Bargain Incorporated, 259 a pound. Asphalt two ninety seven a pound and Elcor construction at five ninety five a pound. Funds designated for this project are included in the twenty twenty budget. Looks like they uh, came in under what you projected too, Sean. Or? Some of the estimate. Or? I didn't know. I I have no idea. We just no. solicit each time and go to the same crews and okay. and get prices from them. So. So oh, no, I'm not here. Our, our proposed budget, what we thought. It oh came yeah, in yeah, we yeah, yep. Yeah. It's budget is third so. All right, good. Council Act request is award chip filling contract to the little bit of Pearson Brothers Incorporated. Do we have a motion for that? I'll make a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Award the crack filling contract to Little Bitter Bargain Incorporated. Do we have a motion? I'll make that motion. Second? Second. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That also carries. That'll take us to uh, the last one item is the Public Works Department again, the part time seasonal workers. Public Works Director Hale is recommending the following hires to the Personnel Committee Alan May, Jerry Newbauer, Cole Rader, Shane Updegraff. How do you say his name? Chai. 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 Specter. And Kyle Lipke. Greater new bar will be split in position on one of the large motors. Council action request is to approve the hires as submitted. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, we have a motion. Move to approve. Oh, I'll second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. That also carries. That's going to take us out of there to the mayor staff consultant report. In the mayor's report tonight, we'd like to send the city would like to send their sympathies to the families of Caitlin Griffin, 
Marvin Truax, Janice Johnson, Bill Javern. Don't forget, your last chance to sign up for Community Garden is now, correct? Plant the Gardens looking towards the future. Thank you to our library staff for all the work in getting the book pickup started again. It's greatly appreciated. As we can see from the letter to the Editor's Circle Star, it's very appreciated. And I got a couple calls myself about it, so thanks a lot for getting that going again. And once again, here we are two weeks later. We're still doing our part to uh, keep everybody safe, so I'd like to thank the community for that again. It's uh, good to see that everybody's spirits are pretty good yet. Holding up, get this nice weather. You want to get out and get about and kind of shelter in place all winter, waiting for the nice weather. But it looks like we could be coming to the end. We'll find out here this week from our governor. But there's a lot of great things that have been going on. The drive-in movie down there at Racine just the other night, huge turnout. They talked about all the people that turned away. We've got our library doing our book pickup again. Some of the folks I've talked to around town, the pick up and carry out from our local restaurants is going very well. They seem to be, business seems to be working for them. A lot of neighbors helping out neighbors, getting work done for them, helping them do stuff. Just keep a little bit of social distancing. We can still have a good time. We can be out talking, walking, visiting with the neighbors. So I appreciate all we're doing for it. And hopefully we're nearing the end of it. So thanks again, folks. I'll take us to a city administrator's report. Uh, reports in your packet. <clears throat> Hopefully some good news. As of now, we're trying to plan to keep the uh, citywide cleanup in place. Sean and I met with Tori Keefe. So what we think we've worked out is an arrangement to keep the schedule like we've advertised. But this year, our staff, or I mean in past years, our staff or Tori's staff would help citizens unload. Well, Tori said the only way he can really get it to work properly is if each citizen unloads their own items. So he'll still have signage, dumpsters, drop areas, and then we'll try to see how we limit the vehicles going in, but then each um, vehicle will have to have people on there in, them, in the vehicle themselves to give them a helping hand or give themselves a helping hand. And then uh, we'll monitor how many can be in at a time and go from there. So hopefully that's good news. Then um, the chamber is dealing with what we should do here with the summer uh, activities. Right now it looks like uh, the dance and the arts in the park is going to have to fall off the um, uh, radar uh, from what their feedback has been. Um, they've talked about ideas for fireworks and uh, parade, but there again, depending on what uh, orders the governor has, depending on what gathering uh, situations are in place, that may have to fall by the wayside or get delayed uh, as well. Uh, obviously, there's still a lot of excitement from the Chamber Board to want to do some things. I think our community wants to do some things, but we're going to be at the mercy of, of what we see. And like you said, Mayor, that's going to be these next couple weeks that we'll probably get a better feel for uh, what will be able to happen. We are monitoring the other communities. Right now it's mixed. Um, you're seeing more in the news of the ones that are canceling everything. So we may have to follow that, but uh, we'll keep an keep a optimistic eye out for a little while yet. Um, we are still planning to try to get uh, a softball uh, season into place uh, for league. There might be some guidelines there that we'll have to watch, but uh, we're at least looking into that. And then, of course, the big one that you all may have to weigh in on is the swimming pool. We're at least making our plans to try to open up and uh, be available because obviously it'll be a citizen's choice if you want to go to the pool or not. But that probably um, is going to have to come as a directive from uh, the State Department of Health, which does the inspections of our pools and is going to have to comment uh, one way or the other if they feel that uh, those restrictions can be lifted and we can open up or no, this particular season uh, we may have to um, put that by the wayside as well. So we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, they're obviously well aware of it. We've been in touch or gotten in contact with uh, one of the local area inspectors from the Department of Health, and it sounds like some of the surrounding cities are trying to see if they can uh, stay in place or stay open. So we'll just have to wait and see. And then ultimately, it's gonna be up to you folks um, if you get citizen feedback one way or the other as well.
I see they delayed the Kentucky Derby until September and all that. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> um, and swimming lessons, we're not going to even sign up until May for them? Or? Right now it's scheduled for May 21st, I believe. May 21st. Mm -hmm. All right, any questions for the administrator? The pool, we're going to hold off <clears throat> getting it ready, and we'll put extra guys up there in the end to make it happen quicker so we don't spend a bunch of money and time getting it ready and then it is open. So if we have to, we'll just put extra guys there at the last minute to get it opened up on time. Okay. Any questions for Bill? All right, thank you, Bill. Finance Director Carlo. I just have one quick thing. Um, we have the first uh, request for a hazardous tree to be assessed on a property. Um, so we had kind of met and talked about putting a policy in place for that where um, they will have to sign a petition and waiver an agreement um, by the property owner um, and just trying to figure out what the interest rate should be on that. For most things we use, the prime plus one and so um, basically we will use the prime rate on 1231 of the prior year um, plus one. So, and then anything that is under $2,500, the taxpayer could be assessed for up to three years. Anything over $2,500, then it can be assessed for five years. And, and that's if, if they want our participation to help. They're still free to get their own quote and just pay for it outright. So, so this was someone that brought it up on their own property? Is what they're saying? We had a complaint and so we did the, <clears throat> had the third party come down and there's two trees that need to be removed. Um, and so she's been notified and she first thought she would do it on her own but then came back and asked if we would just have the trees down, removed, and then. So who went out? Who did we send out to make a decision whether it wasn't? Weren't we supposed to have a Meyer school? Yeah. Jay Meyer. We had a three-person board from Meyer. Okay, trees. so they did look at it. I just wanted. Yes. I don't want to get. Into, I get worried that we're going to get in the spot where all of a sudden neighbors can just call and try to start the process when it's not even relevant. You know, I mean, I just a little worried. So that what happens? The neighbor cool. calls um, Sean and Scott go look, and they say, "Yeah, we think it's probably right. dead," and then we call that third party in. So, and we've got um, another letter just went out this last weekend, um, and that property owner has three trees. Um, there was four evaluated, three are hazardous to um, neighbor's property or city property, so. And, and it's more along the lines of, like ones that are hanging over people's fences and stuff like that, he's not deeming an issue. It's the ones that are hanging over houses and, sure. you know, more, safety issue. Yeah, I would hope that they would err on the side of mm -hmm. keeping the tree if possible, you know. Any other questions? Do you need motion approval or I don't think guidance? so. This is just kind of just a piece of information in addition that I just wanted to share with you that I think everything was already in place with the hazardous trees. Alright, right, thank you, Carol. Public Works Director, Sean? Uh, reports in there. The one thing I wanted to talk about, parks. We put the parks together this week. Uh, the water is on, bathrooms are usable. We have not unlocked them as of yet. Uh, so that's a decision that'll have to be made also is if we want to unlock parks. I know it's all over the boards with different towns and what they're doing. Uh, I know, I mean, if you look at Minneapolis and they shut down everything well, we for know the more. whole year, with the whole summer. Well, that's we know more May 4th. Hey, look at Michigan, they find a thousand bucks from all in front of you. I just, I, have, I don't know what to think with the bathrooms. I mean, I want people out there and I don't, I know if I had to go, I'd be in a tree. I don't want other people doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, and I don't think people are necessarily going to congregate. I think you just have to make sure that we had proper soap and whatever in there to yeah. encourage hand washing. We did talk about maybe just keeping the porta potties there, but then we felt that with the running water and the soap, it's probably Better. a little more safer having the bathrooms open, but we would put signage up that said, you know, at risk or own risk, yeah. So most people probably will not use them, but then there's gonna be those few if you gotta go, you that gotta need go. to go. Oh, yeah. Right. And we do do a regular maintenance. Um, it's just not every hour on the hour or every right. day, but right. so they will be attended to. Um, 
but it would be a citizen's choice or discretion, is how we're thinking or would like to do it. So. I'd say it <laughs> You can always shut them down if they start, if they decide that's a place they want to congregate, you know, <laughs> 10 or more in there hanging all the time, I guess we can lock them back up. It, we'll do whatever is what you guys agreed to. It's just been so all over the board what everyone's doing that I really don't care. Well, get just an awful lot of people on these trails and stuff walking through the parks and things like that. And it can't be open until after May 4th anyway, right? I'm pretty sure that's one of the... I don't know that I would want to even mess with anything until May 4th anyway, right. just to yeah. see what the governor says. That's just guidance is all I want, whatever you guys want to do. We, could, we need to make an ordinance that if you wear your mask and you're alone in your car, you're you can pee in public. <laughs> then you can go pee in public. <laughs> I just can't yeah, shake my head at these people. Like that. You can't be that freaking dumb. It's in your car. You're the only <laughs> One other thing was we uh, got pricing on getting an inspection on the water tower, which will be the uh, pedestal tower yeah, out northwest. Skip that. Uh, and <laughs> skip that. I've got a feeling it's not going to be cheap. <laughs> well, it's, it's, uh, it's 4600 was the bid, which it's through SEH. In the past, we used to bounce around and use different, get bids on that. Well, a few years ago, we quit doing that because you're getting some guy that's been in the thing for two years doing it this time, someone, so we wanted to get consistency, and if SEH is our engineer, we hire them to do it. Uh, and that's the going rate, what they're doing anyway, so it's not like it's... Do we do that annually? No, every five years, we do an inspection on each tower. Every five, huh? So, or no, I shouldn't... That, Seven years in the pumps, five years in the tower, yeah. So everything's on a schedule per years is what when we have them come pull them and inspect them, we try and stagger them so the expenses. Uh, and then we do need to pressure wash that tower out there. So we're in the process of getting prices to get it pressure washed. And uh, they'll do that before they inspect it to help with the inspection. As far as the bathrooms, I guess, we're going to wait till. Yeah, I, don't think we, I don't think we should be in any position to do anything if there's a stay at home order on. After that gets lifted, then I think it's time for us to step in and start making decisions. Yeah. Well, parks are open and ready to go the second it's lifted or done. So. Yeah, I mean, technically, we're not, parks are open right now. We're not going to yell at anybody for being in the park. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if we're not unlocking bathrooms, it's not like it's so much on our onus that we're pushing it. Or the only thing is, we got a, one of them that's has water to it that's an exterior one with no doors or nothing on it that is just the open pits but it has running water to it from the wash their hands which is better than having the open pits there with no running water so yeah they'd be using that one anyhow mm -hmm. and in all honesty the bathrooms all of them are push lever you can hit them with your elbow or something if you want you don't even have to touch anything really all right let's go that way and see what he says next mm -hmm. right there for me. Rescue, okay? Yep. Sounds good. Yep. I thought I had something on there. I don't know. I'll, I'll remember it later, Sean. All right. Thanks. I'm sure you'll see me. Uh, city Engineer, Jenna, you got anything you want to report? Anybody got any questions for Jenna? All right, thank you. Uh, no library director, no fire chief. That takes us to committee commission board reports. Chamber of Commerce to the EDHRA. I missed it last week, so I don't know. We, we did a Zoom, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. Virtual meeting. And Finance? Nothing. Nothing. Library? Nothing. Park board? Nothing. Personnel? Nothing. I'm going to fire anybody in that crate. I don't think so. All right. Planning zoning? <coughs> How do you mean next week? Right. Public safety. March and April calls for service. Jason, you got anything? I'll just pound on that. Yeah, I gave you a March and April from. Uh, 2020 and 2019. Oh, okay. Just to kind of give you guys an idea, of, if you look at April especially, you'll see a big drop off in numbers. Traffic stops, a lot of self initiated calls are down. Is that because everybody's um, staying home? Traffic's way down because a lot less cars and deputies were 
not targeting the minor violations as much, just to kind of limit the amount of contact you have. And just so you know, there's, it, it, it goes way down, but there's also a handful of data on account for it. It's not going to come up yet. But, um, but just to uh, let you know, too, meeting this week, we're kind of revamping traffic again. We're going to start doing actually a little extra traffic enforcement now. Uh, we're going to bring some guys that are working, normally not control people who come up and do some traffic saturation now. It's, uh, Currently, the last state report said it crashes from statewide and then up. So, I'm going to try to mitigate that down here. Uh, other than that, um, just the only thing I wanted to mention that we, we have been getting a lot of complaints and questions about ATV laws in town here. People driving ATVs on the, the city streets. So, we're addressing those. We've been contact with a few people driving them. Um, the last few days, it's said that they're right what what's what are they doing? I mean, what's happening? Uh, racing you know, some, people, some people calling, questioning whether they're allowed to be on the street at all, which they are, um, and then other complaints that they're not pushing them, pushing them a lot. I mean, they're supposed to drive them uh, all the way to the curb. This is for I mean, this is for a four wheeler. If you have a right. four wheeler ATV, it's supposed to be on as far to the right as possible, and you're supposed to drive slower than normal traffic. They're not street legal as some people describe them. They are just allowed to be driven on the street. Street legal would mean they'd be registered like a, with a license plate like a motorcycle would be and they can drive the speed limit. But they should not be driving 30 miles per hour down the road. So we've had, I think, most of the complaints have been north, northeast and northwest. I think there's a one complaint that's still out there that I don't think we've been able to speak to the violators about it. Right on 6th Street Northeast. Well, you've been able to speak the most of them. Uh, yeah, the one that was Northwest, I think we've got that one handled, but the Northeast one, kind of, I don't believe we've ever had, we've had contact with the two of them that have been different times of day, you know, we've been driving on 6th Street Northeast, but right. we've talked to them. Other than that, unless you got questions or concerns for me, that's all I have. Anything for Jason? No? Thanks, Jason. Public Works? Uh, nothing to add. We we'll just leave that to do the CIP stuff. That was okay. Ready? No report. Roll call. No report. School 180. Nothing. Transit Advisory Committee. They're going to try to meet virtually in May or um, mid May. Okay. No communications. Open mic. Going to go here for open mic. Okay. No open mic. We have one motion left to make. Craig. Make a motion to adjourn. We have a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. Okay, Cheryl.